Hi, let's talk about the design and development of the content of a presentation or communication. About a month ago, my husband came home from work and said, I have a vacation coming up. We have two weeks. So we sat down with the family, gathered around the table and started talking about this two week vacation. Well, what do you think was the very first question that we had to answer in order to go further? Okay, it may seem simple, but the question was, where are we going to go? Well, what's interesting is if once we knew where we were going, that would help us make the decisions that we needed to make along the way. For instance, did we need to pack swimwear or ski wear? Are we going to drive or fly? Do we have to pre-buy tickets to events or theme parks? If we didn't know where we were going, we wouldn't be able to answer those questions. So basically, knowing the outcome to this vacation helps us to determine all of the information we need to get there. Well, guess what? Knowing the outcome of something works just as well for a presentation. In developing an outcome-based presentation, this will allow you to answer any other questions that come along when you're putting your content together. I mean, think about it. If you, if you didn't know where you wanted the presentation to end up, how would you know how to develop the information to get there? And it kind of seems strange to think of uh, doing a presentation from the end, but if you only thought from the very beginning and just kept following that path, how do you know exactly where it's going to lead? Let's look at some of the questions that you might want to answer when developing an outcome-based presentation. When you're looking at design, where are you going? Start with the end in mind. A lot of times, and I know people do this constantly, when you know you're going to make a presentation, what is often the first thing you do? You sit down, open up the computer, and start creating slides. Well, that's another one of those pieces that how can you create slides if you don't know where you're going with the presentation. The slides should be created to support the presentation, not to be the presentation. What's your destination? Not only knowing it, but how confident are you in that destination? Do you have the information and the material that you need in order to help the audience to go to that destination too? What do you want your listeners to think, do, or feel? Most communication and presentations fall into those categories. I want you to, I, I would like to maybe alter your change of thinking. I'd like you to think about something I'm proposing to you. I would like you to think about something to learn from it. How about doing something? I want a project that is going to be approved. I want funding that's going to be approved. Oftentimes, getting an attachment to a presentation, an emotional attachment, is what will help your audience to move into the think and do places. What are the key points that you will address? What are your deliverables in the content? Aside from the basic information you will have, start thinking about the areas that your audience or your listeners, whoever that is, might agree with you. But more importantly, where might they disagree with you? Now, why should you care about that? Because if you can design into your presentation the answers to those issues that you know they're going to ask and that they might push back with, then you don't have to worry about them showing up as attack questions during a question and answer session. For most projects, 
people want to know what is this going to cost? Well, if you know that, then get all those cost parameters put into place so that you can support that and answer that question right at the beginning, or at least during the presentation. Okay, so who will be listening to you? This kind of needs to be answered prior to wondering how they will agree with you or not agree with you. The more you know about who is listening to you, the more focused your presentation or communication will be. And when I refer to this, this can be an extensive email. It can be a, a memo or thought process that you are sharing with, with a team. It can be a, a status report. Any type of communication like that, you need to know exactly who this is going to. And then how about this question? As you start to put together all this and you look toward your destination, will that destination tend to be more of an informative or a persuasive presentation? And that's an interesting thought because often the two of them are designed in a slightly different way. You have a copy of this chart on page five of your resource guide. You can refer to that as you're putting together this uh, homework presentation or any other presentation. So take a look at the two differences here. Under an informative presentation, you notice that the words are more knowledge-based, that uh, I want to identify things for you. I want to help you understand something. I'm going to describe a process or a training piece to you so that you will, will have a, a clearer feeling for it. So those are often done with presenting your purpose, going ahead with your points and information, and then coming to a summary for a conclusion. Now, a persuasive presentation is a little bit different. Now these words are action words. They're emotional words. Inspire, decide, influence, especially buy. On your chart, when you pull it up, you will see that this is broken down into urgency, recommendation, call for action, and next step. Now look at it this way. If you want to change my mind about something or you want me to take a specific action, you have to convince me of that. Well, the best way to do that is to show me what's wrong first. That's kind of considered the urgency. If I don't agree that there's a problem, then why would I agree that we need a solution for it? For instance, let's say that my proposal is I would like funding to build a, an on-site gym or workout room at our location so that our employees would have the opportunity to go and work out like during lunch or before work. Well, I might start by saying, do you have any idea how many sick days we have within our unit or area right here each year? Has anybody shared with you how our health costs and our health premiums, our insurance premiums, have just been skyrocketing lately because people are not getting active? There's a lack of motivation I see with people because if they come in kind of tired in the morning, we're not getting the best out of our work together. Okay, so in a simple form, that's an urgency. That's a problem. So now I recommend that we build a small on-site workout room or even eventually a gymnasium. How about the motivation of a pickup basketball game in the morning before we come up to work? Wouldn't it be great to have healthier employees because our insurance premiums could go down? I think motivation is a huge factor for how people feel. If people feel better, they will be working with us better. We will have fewer sick days and therefore a more productive unit. Okay. So there is an urgency and there's a recommendation. Now, can informative and persuasive go together? Absolutely. Even in a persuasive presentation, now that I've shared the urgency and I've shared my recommendation, I've also told you about the difference in healthcare premiums and um, sick days. 
we talked about that at the urgency, but now let me give you the facts around it. So this is where information would come in because now you're going to build up a support for what you would like to have done for the uh, gymnasium or workout room to be built. And then most of these conclude with a final step, some action. It might be that we have a meeting, let's, let's schedule a meeting with the people who would be involved in this decision, get out your phone calendars, and let's pick a date, say four weeks from now, when we can get back together and revisit this. So that would be a next step that has people doing something before they even walk out of the room. This will reinforce in their minds that there's something that they need to do. Well, here's another thought about presentations. I've shared with you outlines and formats and the way you can put your material together. What if you are a part of a team presentation that maybe there are four or five of you who are going to be giving a presentation on different aspects of what you are talking about? Maybe in our gymnasium example, now you have a team that someone is cost, some of it was someone is logistics, some of someone has been looking at contractors, and someone else has been developing the impact it will have, the re research impact. Now your team needs to take this to the decision makers to get approval. Well, in team presentations, there are two presentations that happen at the same time. There's the format of your presentation and your piece should have all of those element, elements in it. And the team presentation should have the outcome of its own and the elements of its own. In fact, with many team presentations, each one of you who are presenting are the elements in a team presentation. But don't forget that there are two presentations occurring simultaneously when you are presenting with a team. Well, now you have had a chance to take a presentation and start looking at the material that you will be presenting. For your XLP experience presentation or your pre-work presentation, you have some thoughts as to how to answer those questions that we were talking about in the intro video. What is some of the information that you would like to share? Start jotting that down. Now, you look at some of those pieces and you go, okay, do I have pieces that need clarification? Do I have some data that would better be understood if I could kind of clear up any misunderstanding? Where can I add interest? to this presentation? And where might a story involve itself? Well, that is the information that you're going to learn about in the next video.